For the next three videos, I'm going to do a little mini series on stress and the nervous system. Of course, we want to apply our wellness strategy, but we're going to see how we can't separate the wellness strategy. We've got stop the poison, flood the body with nutrients, and manage our stress. And we're going to have to do all three of those, especially when it comes to the nervous system. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go through first neurotransmitters, okay, and talk about stress and neurotransmitters. Then we're going to talk about the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Uh, and then we'll talk about how the brain can create its own stress. And we'll, we'll intersperse a whole bunch of stuff in between, okay? So first, let's talk about uh, and how we apply our, our stress, I mean, our wellness strategy. We want to talk about flooding the body with nutrients. We want to flood the, the nervous system with good nutrients in order for them to, the nervous system to make the neurotransmitters, right? And so let, we'll talk a little bit about that right now. This is, this is the topic for today. But if we're running our stress levels so high that we're burning up our, nerve, our, our neurotransmitters as fast as we're trying to make them, I mean, yes, we need to flood the body, flood the, the nutrient, you know, all the nutrients we need to get into the nervous system to make those neurotransmitters, but we got to stop burning them up also. And, and, and then we've got to stop those toxins and poisons that are blocking the absorption uh, of those amino acids, if we're gonna, so in particular, we talk about amino acids. So, okay, so here we go. Now, keep in mind what I'm saying is, I'm gonna, I'm, it's not you can't separate all those parts of the of the wellness strategy. We've got to apply all of those. Okay, so you know about neurotransmitters, right? And there are two main neurotransmitters: acetylcholine. Okay, and and the word here is choline that I want to focus on, but acetylcholine is a primary neurotransmitter that operates from the spinal cord out. Uh, to the ganglia uh, in, and, and then back again. So it's, it's, this, it's a huge uh, function of the nervous system and it's uh, predominantly in a lot of the, also in, in all of the autonomic systems, okay? So the ones that we don't control, it's, it's the, uh, those ones that are run by acetylcholine, okay? The other neurotransmitter, main neurotransmitter, there's lots of little neurotransmitters that run. I mean, you can talk about them at the, at the synapses and all the kind of things that happen at the actual cellular level. But if we talk about the you know, organismal level, it's also epinephrine. And epinephrine is the same as adrenaline. Okay, they named them differently because they discovered them differently. Neuro neuroscientists discovered this chemical that was affecting the, the nerve functions and called it a neurotransmitter. And then people who were studying the adrenal glands discovered a hormone that uh, would, you know, that the adrenal glands produced. So we had these two things, adrenaline and, neuro uh, and, and epinephrine. They're the same thing. So if you see the word norepinephrine, that's a precursor. Uh, to the final product. In other words, with this little nor part <laughs> gets clipped off uh, and it becomes an epinephrine. Okay, so it's adrenaline. The, the, the adrenal glands produce adrenaline. Uh, the adrenal glands then, if we stimulate the adrenal glands, and we can do that a number of ways, but uh, you know, some of it is just plain stress. So it's our brain creates that. We'll talk more about that in the third video. Our brain creates the stress that gets the adrenaline to run that gets that that forms uh, functions as a neurotransmitter. Now, what does the the adrenaline do that's different than the acetylcholine, for example? That adrenaline works for the, with the sympathetic nervous system or for the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the part that we stimulate. We we that we our consciousness activates, and it's a lot of things that have to do with muscle contraction, movement. Uh, it's talking about the muscles. It's talking about certain organs and functions. Get the heart rate up. Uh, get the breathing up. We get those things going uh, with the sympathetic nervous system. It's our stress response. Okay, that's the so when we get stressed and and, and diff, you know when the word stress is something that we don't necessarily relate well to in terms of defining. We're talking about physiological stress. The mind can create that stress that creates the physiology to respond. Now that once we hit that stress button, it could also be thought of as the panic button. I've done a video on that. Then we release the, the adrenaline, the adrenaline goes in, increase our heart rate, increase our respiratory rate, gets our muscles twitching going. And normally this would be a situation where we're, we're doing that because we're about to be eaten or something. It's, it's, a, it's a defense mechanism for allow us to run away or fight uh, efficiently or defend uh, efficiently or whatever it is, but it's the muscles are getting uh, uh, flushed with, 
with, uh, with you know, blood and oxygen's coming in through the, through the respiratory system. The heart is pumping hard to, to get that blood out there. The problem is if we're sitting at our desk, uh, you know, that is not the response we're looking for uh, while we're sitting at our desk, we happen to catch a little bit of news uh, that's, that's hap you know, that's running through on, on the, you know, go check your, your email and Yahoo News or whatever. Um, and all of a sudden we've gotten this stress response that gets us completely riled up. Okay. How do we get that stress response down? How do we calm down with that? Okay. So we'll talk about some of these things uh, as we do this little mini series, but let's look predominantly at this issue of neurotransmitters. Now, so that's the adrenaline part, and we'll talk more about how to kind of calm down the adrenaline epinephrine part, okay, or, or not stimulate it in the first place. Um, that's kind of, that's the third video. Um, but today I want to talk about how do we feed the, 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 the basic system, okay? I, mem I mentioned the autonomic nervous system, which is the, the part of the, the system that runs without us thinking about it. And uh, the most, mainly the main neurotransmitter, the one that we use the most is acetylcholine, okay? And so we need this acetylcholine uh, neurotransmitter for basic function, okay? So if we're, if we're feeling tired and we just don't have enough basic level, you know, a baseline level of neurotransmitter, of nerve function, of, of just feels like I can't get going, and we have to then overstimulate the adrenal system in order to get things going, it's because we might be really low in acetylcholine. Okay, now here's where we go in to flood the body with nutrients. We've got to have the choline. We need to supplement choline. Yes, we can get it from our diet. The main, so uh, choline gets, conver it gets utilized, converted, mainly through the liver process. There's, the liver uh, processes the choline and we get that in and then we turn it into acetylcholine for the, for the nervous system and that's what basically feeds that. We need a lot of choline. Children need a lot of choline. We need to get uh, a, a lot of choline in through our diet. And uh, now I think the body does make it, but we, we can, if we supplement with it, we can really do a lot more uh, with it. And so the main, if you want to talk about just the main food source of choline in, in, a, in a re, almost a refined way is, is lecithin, right? We can, you see the soy lecithin or sunflower lecithin, given the concerns with soy and GMO and all the rest of that stuff, I would recommend getting a good quality uh, organic uh, sunflower lecithin product. And it usually comes in these little beads uh, and you just you can put a, a scoop of that in your smoothie. Uh, you could just eat it over your cereal. It's it doesn't taste all that you know. It just kind of doesn't taste like much. But that is uh, the the lecithin is going to have a high amount of choline in it, and that's a great way to feed the system. Uh, and so there's an easy way to get some choline that way. Now, there are Young Living supplements that contain choline, and they do that for a reason, because they're needed in a lot of these different things. Our Juvitone product contains choline. Um, actually, the, the um, Ninja Nitro that we're talking about for the nervous system has a form of choline that's already geared for the brain and nervous system. So that one is actually kind of already loaded up there. Um, and so there's a number of different ways that we can get our choline, okay? Very important that we get that. Now, the other thing that we need in order to form uh, the, the, we need to flood the body with nutrients is the amino acids, okay? And especially branched chain amino acids. And so this really comes in where our AminoWise product, we've got a product called AminoWise, and that product is really, really good for the nervous system. I know it's sold for muscle recovery and it's great for that, but we also need those amino acids for the nervous system to make all the, all the different neurotransmitters that work at the cellular level and at the synapses and all the rest of that stuff. The problem is, yes, we can flood the body with those nutrients, but we have to absorb it. And one of the things that was really prevalent in our diet right now is partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, which we've worked very hard to get rid of. We need to get rid of this stuff because if you eat partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, it blocks absorption of your amino acids. So if you're feeling tired all the time and all of this, and you're, and you're taking supplements and they're not working, you've got to stop the poison. You've got to stop the uh, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. This is not something you should avoid. This is something you should eliminate. I mean, eliminate it. Just 
avoid it like the plague. I mean, in other words, this is this stuff is killing you, and it is. It, it, this stuff is is absolutely damaging the body. You will block the absorption of your amino acids. It's uh, it it. This stuff is just bad. It coats the intestines. We have all kinds of other things we can talk about with that, but that's the main one. Is that you start to lose muscle tone uh, because a muscle, you know, muscle mass. You start to lose muscle mass if you're eating partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated vegetable oils. So you need to get rid of that stuff, and you can see it in, uh, you know, in your food products and everything. But basically, when you got these tubs of margarine, uh, that's pure that's pure partially hydrogenated vegetable, and it's just so prevalent. So you gotta get rid of that. So you can see how we have to do the whole program here. We've got to stop poisoning ourselves with something like partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. We need to flood the body with nutrients. We gotta get those essential, there's some of these essential amino acids, which means we have to have them, we can't make them. Uh, so we need to get these branch chain amino acids. That's the AminoWise product. We need to get that extra choline. We can take the Juvitone. Uh, we, you know, those, so we have to flood the nervous system, the brain, with the right kind of, of, of support and nutritional support. Of course, that means we got to get enough water in there, too, and we got to get enough oxygen. We know breathing and, and water, drinking our water. And just I want to make a comment. It's not just any old water. I drank tap water the other day, and I, I, I mean, I, I didn't really drink it. I just sipped it. I couldn't believe how nasty it is. So, uh, because I've been I've been using absolutely clean, filtered, reverse osmosis filtered water for so long that I, I just really didn't realize how bad tap water was. Ooh, really, do not drink tap water. We've got to drink, drink our water. I would rather be dehydrated than drink the tap water. Um, I mean, I would obviously at some limit there, but I, I mean, I really think I would have to figure out some kind of stovetop distillation system if that's all I had was was tap water I'd try to figure out how to boil that stuff off and make and capture some of the uh, uh, the better cleaner water so we need to breathe we need to drink our water we need to stop poisoning ourselves flood the body with nutrients and then manage our stress okay now breathing is going to help you manage your stress but we can add that little breath Breathe in and imagine all this goodness that we're just talking about here, these wonderful flood the body. Imagine those coming in and absorbing into the body and feeding the nervous system. With every breath, every time we breathe in, we're absorbing and pulling in, not just the oxygen that, that's vitalizing our, our body, but we can pull in, imagine the, 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 those nutrients that we've just eaten, pulling into our system and feeding up into the brain. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more uh, next video about the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems and how to, how, to, how to negotiate those two things. And then we'll also talk about how the brain has its own internal loop and manage our stress in that way. Okay, happy wellness, one day at a time. We'll see you tomorrow.